So I'm heading back to Ladyfield now. And uh, just the other day we put up our first video on our Ladyfield Farm YouTube channel. And uh, it was so nice to get all the comments and uh, good wishes. Uh, people who are already letting us know they want to be part of this journey. And it's really, you know, I put that little video together and thinking, well, is anybody going to be interested in me wandering up a hill trying to fix a water pipe? Turns out, you are. <laughs> Who'd have thought it? So, we've been shooting little bits of video since we got here last year and um, not really knowing what I was going to do with them. But I'm going to try and collate them together and make some, just tell our story really. Um, how we got here and what we did once we got here and all those kind of things. So, I have to say thank you for showing interest and uh, I hope we can keep the story going and you'll feel like you're part of it that'll be really cool so please feel free feel thrill you can feel thrills if you want feel free to send other people in our direction see if uh, we can get a little community going here of uh, like-minded folks who are interested in what we're doing so uh, thanks for that and uh, Enjoy the video. When we first arrived at Ladyfield, there was a fairly tired looking old sign at the top of the road, where the top of our lane where it meets the road anyway. Yeah, it had obviously been hanging there for a while and wasn't looking its best, so I thought it would be a nice thing to do to, to make a new sign. And I used to I used to dabble around with a a bit of carving when I was younger. So I found myself a really nice piece of oak board and found a nice Celtic looking font, traced it out on paper and transferred it to the wood and I was quite keen to have not just Ladyfield Farm but the word Leknamban on there which is the old Gallic name for Ladyfield one of the many spellings I found for it and the whole story of Leknamban and its spellings and its meaning is a whole other story for a, a whole other video but I thought it'd be really nice to have both the English and the Gallic names on on the sign and so uh, once it was traced onto the oak board there was many hours spent at the uh, kitchen table in the caravan chipping away with the chisels and gouges but it's a very satisfying thing to do and really pleased with how it came out and then it was uh, it was a case of getting it erected and my son Tom made a really nice post for us and then it was just down to me and Lindsay to go out and grapple a hole into the ground which is not the easiest thing around here there's lots of lots of stone and rock wherever you dig so uh, we spent a, a while <laughs> grubbing away at that uh, but we got there and and now the sign is in place and hopefully it'll be there for many, many years. But there's a, that's not the only sign we have here. And there's a nice story about the other one, which I'll tell you as I head back down to the farm and show you a few things along the way. This is the entrance, so that's where we, that's the main road just there. We come in down this track. Uh, of course, when we we actually have been being as it was this time of year, it didn't look that different. But by the time we came back later in the year to have another look, and then again when we we moved up in uh, in July, it was uh, really overgrown. We had lots of work to do to. 
get it cleared and we had to make room for along the uh, along the track for for our new caravan to be delivered which was uh, something of an epic task because you'll see as we get down to the bottom here it's a fairly tight left hand bend onto onto the bridge across the river Airy and uh, our caravan is 38 foot long and uh, 12 foot wide and I had to get around this bend and over this bridge Amazing bit of work by the, uh, the driver to do that. So this is the bridge that we cross, and here's the River Airy. It's fairly low today because everything's frozen up. There's not a lot of water flowing around the place. But you can see it's uh, it's flowing. I've seen it. Very, very different to this. Apparently this is an area that floods every 200 years. A 1 in 200 fluvial floodplain they call it. And from what we know, it flooded in 1912. I think that was the year I heard that it flooded at the bottom here. And uh, so I guess we're safe for a while. Who knows? But it's come pretty close a few times to getting above the bridge. And this is Ladyfield Farm. It's been fascinating since we've been here to find that so many people along the Glen and even in Inverary as well, and I'm, I'm guessing beyond, you know, people we haven't yet met, have some connection or some story about Ladyfield. Uh, the history of the place is, is remarkable. Uh, even the, the recent history, there's uh, just back down the glen, there's a farm, Drimfern, and uh, a friend Rory lives there. And his father, Jake, was born at Ladyfield. And Jake's parents, Rory's grandparents, were the last people to farm it. Because Ladyfield used to be much bigger than the seven acres that it is now. Basically this this meadow here was the hayfield and that's the amount of silage you could cut from your hayfield determined how many animals you could look after over the winter. 
and you can see up behind me all that forestry you see lots of it's been cut now but that all used to be part of Ladyfield Farm that was where the sheep would have gone out in the summer but the estate the, the Argyle estate which owned Ladyfield and tenanted it out decided for whatever reason to plant that land with trees and to turn it to forestry so that was in the 70s but around 76 I think and so Ruri's grandparents were were here then they were the last people to farm it And so this summer, my friend Stephen, another farmer from down the Glen and Rory, they came because our meadow was, I'll turn you around and show you it. It's, uh, you can see it's, there's not a lot of vegetation there at the moment. Partly because it's winter, but also because We've had our sheep on here since September and they've kept it well trimmed. But when we first arrived it was well, it was waist high with grass and flowers. It hadn't been cut for quite some time I don't think. And so Stephen and Rory organised for it to be cut and they took 30 30 bales of silage off here, which is a, a good amount. And it was uh, it was a great day. Uh, there was lots of activity here. We had we'd only been here a month, maybe six weeks, and uh, the tractors arrived and the mower arrived, and uh, the baling machine arrived a few days later, and Rory was here, Stephen was here. Rory's father, Jake, came. And of course, Jake lived here. Uh, it was just fascinating to uh, hear a couple of his stories and uh, to hear how certain things had changed. But everybody's, everybody in the Glen had something to do with Ladyfield. There's a real connection amongst the, among the community. There used to be far more people in the Glen years ago. Hundreds, in fact, and now there's, uh, oh, I don't know how many people there would be actually living in the Glen. I wouldn't even think it was 50. I doubt it's that many. And that was a, that was a lovely day. It felt like we were part of what was going on in the Glen. You know, we've moved 500 miles from where, where we've spent most, well, all of our lives living. Oh, I'll just turn around, you might be able to see the sheep. Just, there's two of them, anyway, just on, just on the bank by the caravan. Uh, yeah, we've moved a long way from home and It was a special day when they came and bailed the silage and uh, we met all these people that were connected to Ladyfield. But then, I can't remember now, maybe it was just before, just after Christmas, a couple of days, either side of Christmas. A lovely thing happened. And that was that Rory pulled up in his, uh, in his truck and uh, first time I'd, first time we've been up here since we did cut the silage in the summer. And <laughs> you know the glimpse of the sheep just having a little munch on the on the grass there. They won't hang around long if I keep going towards them. Uh, yeah, Rory turned up. And he said, oh, I've got a little something for you in the truck. 
really. And uh, he told me that his uncle, some years ago, gave him an old sign from Ladyfoot Farm. Uh, I guess they must have taken it when they left in the 70s. Because uh, Rory's uncle lived here as well, obviously. And Rory's kept that sign all them years in a caravan up at the farm where he is now. And he said, I thought it was about time it came home. And that, that was a special moment for us. It felt like uh, we were part of, part of the community and part of, part of Ladyfield history. Thank mm -hmm. you.